Welcome this evening. We are so excited. This is our first graduation ceremony for the Resident Leader Training Program. We are just super excited. Give yourselves a hand. So this time last year, the city of Brockton engaged an organization called the Enterprise Group. It was also known as National Resource Network. They came to Brockton and they interviewed a lot of people, stakeholders, if you will, residents, politicians, business owners, just mothers, parents. They asked them what did they think they needed in the city? What could be better in the city? And what were the needs that they saw? And a lot of people came up with the fact that communication was lacking in certain areas. So we devised a strategy, this is based on a national model, to empower each resident, each community, so that we could basically take our city back one house at a time, one street at a time, one block at a time. And that's what the neighborhood associations are about. It's about teaching groups to have a voice at the table so that something's going on in your city, you can actually call up the mayor and say, hi, I'm Susie Smith and I represent the Jones Hill Neighborhood Association and we'd like to have a meeting. And the mayor would say, okay, Susie Smith, we'd like to talk with you as well. So you have a voice, you have an empowering um, a message and that's what we wanted to celebrate today. So we have, without no, further delay on my part, I would actually like to welcome our mayor for a few words. He is actually going to be handing out the first grants and deliverables that have been awarded to our neighborhood associations. We are so psyched. So mayor, do you have a minute? No, I got my glasses. I don't need them anyhow. Oh, I did put them on my jacket. No, I don't need them. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so yep. Be, yep, this is Jamal. Oh, this, yeah, is, this is uh, Gillard's Neighborhood Association. Right, this is Joanne. Okay. Yep, okay. So good evening, everyone. It's uh, great to join you here tonight. This is certainly an exciting time. I want to thank uh, Andrea and Lynn uh, and all the folks that have been supporting us. I want to welcome Council Nicastro and Council Beauregard. Thank you for being here. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, this is, you know, what we believe is, is a beginning, a, a really a first step towards developing a, a group of community leaders in the city and also establishing neighborhood associations throughout the city. And um, it, it's a concept that I've believed in for a long time, uh, but we finally had the opportunity by working with the National Resource Network this past year to, to actually bring in the strategies and the training and, and have Lynn and Andrea in a position to, to implement the plan. Uh, so our goal is to both, we do have a few neighborhood associations now, we want to continue to support and help existing neighborhood associations grow. Um, but also at the same time tonight, we're recognizing a couple of new uh, neighborhood associations and we want to uh, award to them what we believe will be the first of many uh, grants from the city to help support the activities of the neighborhood associations. Um, you know, we were just having a little bit of a conversation about Crime Watch. Crime Watch is important, but to me, it's one part. It's one piece of what a neighborhood association is capable of. It's the part people seem to like to talk about a lot, um, because if there's, you know, if there's an issue that really can impact a neighborhood or pull a neighborhood together, is um, if they are having public safety issues in their neighborhood. Um, but the potential of neighborhood associations is so much more than that. And it's, it's looking at and addressing all issues that impact a neighborhood. Uh, we're doing a lot more with quality of life issues now, but it's all issues that affect a neighborhood. It can be anything from a street light out to junk cars to uh, a drug dealer and, and everything in between. So I think that the people who really know what's going on in a neighborhood are the residents of the neighborhood and we need to develop some leaders from those neighborhoods that will pull 
the good people in the neighborhood together to affect positive change in the neighborhood. And it's about, it's about taking ownership of your neighborhood. It's about taking ownership of the green spaces in your neighborhood. Um, and so we're excited that this is going and I think we're already ramping up for the next wave of training for more community leaders uh, beginning in January. Uh, but this is exciting both to see some of our existing groups continuing to grow and to see two new neighborhood associations officially launching uh, in terms of receiving uh, support from the city, financial support with grants. Um, so I, it's almost like, you know, we're making this complicated, but to me the premise is really pretty simple. Um, you know, and this is something as simple as just getting folks to know each other that live in the same neighborhood, something that's seemed to have been lost over recent years. Um, and that's the beginning, and we need these leaders from each neighborhood that will do that outreach and bring people together uh, because we know that a group of folks together are a much louder voice than one individual is. Um, and I think that there's a lot we can do to work with neighborhood associations. So uh, this, is, this is a very exciting time for the city. I want to congratulate everybody uh, that's involved in both the existing and the new neighborhood associations. Um, we're all already working on some ideas for the next group of new associations to come along where we're really going to look at maybe targeting some specific neighborhoods and seeing if we can recruit some of the next group of community leaders from those neighborhoods where we know that there are some existing issues and we really need some folks to organize and advocate on behalf of their own neighborhood. Um, so it's, uh, it really has the potential to bring change, to bring positive change to neighborhoods. So the real reason they brought me was to hand out some money. <laughs> so, um, so I want to award these first two. First for the, uh, the people affecting community change, uh, Jamal, who I've had the pleasure to sit with a number of times, and uh, Jamal is uh, not only knowledgeable and motivated, but he really believes in the importance of employment and jobs and, and what that means to individuals and families, and particularly individuals um, that may be overcoming some challenges in their life. And, uh, you know, I couldn't agree more. And, and I mean, just examples, if, whether it's, if it's an individual reentering the community after incarceration, or if it's somebody who's, who's on a road to recovery from substance abuse, uh, it doesn't matter what hurdle that you're clearing, if you can't get a decent job, it's gonna be awfully hard to make it. You know, folks need a job with a livable wage and they need a roof over their head. And if we can't help them have a place to live and help them get a decent job, I don't know how they're gonna succeed. And so I, I believe very deeply in the things that Jamal is working on. I'm excited that he's part of the program. So Jamal, come on up and accept the first grant check for people affecting community change. So we're we're going to get a picture. Wait, Janet, Janet's back with her photo, <laughs> with her camera, take photos. That's right. Thank you, Jamal. Uh, and our, our other new association that's receiving their first grant award tonight is the Village Neighborhood Association. The Village, the Village people, yeah. So we'll invite Joanne and Joanne and Deb to come on up. John, you're going to join them too? See? Well, they're looking like an association already. They're doing everything together, including get the money. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, the, the village is a great neighborhood with a great history and tradition in the city. And you know, clearly it's been a neighborhood in transition in recent years. And, and we have faced some challenges down there. Um, but uh, the village is coming back and it's great to have uh, leaders from that part of the city that are willing to lead the comeback. So I'll present this to Joanne, but it's for the whole group. And congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Got to get a photo with the check. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Awesome. Thank you. 
So that's going to fill in. I apologize for being a little casual. I just got back from the airport like half an hour ago, and I had a jacket and tie on all day, and I just couldn't do it anymore. I had to take them off. So, um, But I want to bring Lynn up now to take over the program, and thank you so much for being here. So I just want to thank um, Mayor Carpenter. From the very beginning, he was very supportive of our neighborhood associations. And Jamal and Joanne, you haven't gotten off scot-free. You're going to come up here now. So be thinking about what you'd like to say. You're not going to get off. So for anyone in the room who doesn't know about the program, what we have done is we've done six months, once a month. We meet for 90 minutes. We start on time. We end on time. And we learn the mechanics of creating an association, how to get a tax ID for the purpose of opening a bank account, how to write operating principles, how to have checks and balances so that more than one set of eyes looks at expenses and looks at bills, how to ask for money in an appropriate way to funders, how to find people in the neighborhood um, to get engaged in our program, how to create our first event, all of those things that we take for granted. But when you know the tricks of the trade, it makes it really easy. And what the program has done is when you hit those deliverables, we call them deliverables, then you are eligible for grant funding. So you get your tax ID, you get your bank account, you write your operating principles, $250. You have your first core meeting, you elect your steering committee, $250. You have your first public meeting in the neighborhood, $250. You have your first event, $250. So this gives a new neighborhood association a little bit of capital in order to do a special project or do a special event to get more people engaged and more people involved. Now, we didn't want to leave out the existing neighborhood associations, so attached to that is also a mini-grant program. So existing neighborhood associations like Keith Park, like Frederick Douglass, like Ash Street Park, like Edgar Park, can apply for up to $500 in a fiscal year for mini-grants. But you have to go through a process of thinking about your event. When is it going to be? Where is it going to be? What are my volunteers worth in terms of hours? Can I find any in-kind contributions? If I'm going to ask the city for money, what's it going to go to? How do I keep receipts? How do I do a report after the event so that the city knows the who, what, and where of the event that we're doing actual outreach in the community? And so also tonight, we want to congratulate the Ash Street Park Neighborhood Association. They're doing two events, one in October, which is a fall festival pumpkin event. And they received a mini grant of $250 towards that. And they're doing, yep, give them a hand. And they're doing a second event in um, December, which is a toy drive Christmas um, event, their second annual and they were able to get a mini grant for that event as well. And some of you might have gone in August to the Movie in the Park event at Keith Park, and the Keith Park Neighborhood Association wrote a mini grant and it funded that movie. So now the city is going to be able to track these requests for funds. They're going to be able to see the thought process that the Neighborhood Association has gone through in creating the event, and they're going to get a report after the event is over, how many people came, where did you spend your money, what worked well, what didn't work um, well. So there's a lot of work involved with this before you get any grant money. So what I'd like to do is, I don't know who would like to come up from the Village Neighborhood Association and from PAC and talk a little bit about what you went through. So Jamal, do you want to start first? Oh, Joanne will go first. All right. So, Joanne, come on up and, and talk a little bit about what you went through and give her a hand. Hi, everyone. Um, so, I'm from the newly formed Village Neighborhood Association. 
Uh, yeah, the village people, it takes a village, right? <laughs> so we've, uh, we've been at it since, uh, well, since January, February time when the city first had the uh, trainings with the uh, nonprofit down in DC. So I attended a couple of those. John Dzerzhinskis attended a couple of those with Sherry Lee. Um, and from there, we kind of both realized that we both wanted to do something. I live more in the McKinley Park side of the village. John lives closer to Tukas Park. Um, so between the two of us, we've basically taken kind of that whole area between those two parks and called it the Village Neighborhood Association. Uh, we met, I think for the first time in June as a group. Uh, we started small, I think there was maybe five of us around the table. Um, we talked about what we wanted to do. Um, Lynn and Andrea had provided us with some templates of sort of a vision and a mission and some things to think about in terms of structuring our group. Um, we talked a lot about that. We had some pizza, we drank some Dollar adult drink. beverages, <laughs> uh, and we had a good time. And, uh, and then we met again about a month later to kind of work on the detail. You know, at that point we brought a couple of friends along and then we met another month later and a couple of other friends came along. So we've now grew a group of about 10 people. We've elected our officers, so we have a steering committee of um, seven now. Um, Deb is the president, John is the vice president, Sherry Lee no, is... The <laughs> I'm the president, John is the vice president, and Sherry Lee is our recording secretary and we have other folks involved. Um, and now we're at that point where we're starting to talk about the really fun stuff. So we've talked about um, doing some uh, revitalization work in Tukas Park, maybe doing some events or some cleanups at McKinley. We've talked a lot about doing some community mural projects in our area. Um, maybe doing some um, welcome to our neighborhood signage. Um, we've talked about maybe doing some crime watch activities. So we're bouncing around a whole bunch of ideas and there's gonna be, I think, a lot, a lot to come once we you know, get going over the next couple of months. So we're really excited about this grant. I think it's awesome that the mayor's office is supporting the work that you know, neighborhoods are doing. Thank you, Lynn, for all the work that you've done on this. Andrea as well, it's been hugely supportive. Um, so yeah, so we're really excited. We've now got an email address as well, so if there's anybody watching in the village area that wants to get involved, the email address is villagenabrockton at gmail.com. You can also call me anytime on my cell phone, 508-649-3479. And pretty soon we're gonna be doing some door knocking with some flyers to hand out information to residents in the area as well too. Um, that's all I've got. <laughs> Thank you everyone. So um, we are going to start another six months of classes in January. And for anyone at home watching this program or anyone who might be interested, we use Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y, as a free website. So you can go to Team Brockton RLP, Team Brockton RLP .weebly .com, and all of this information is on that um, website. We haven't quite set up a Facebook page yet, but we will get to that. But Team Brockton RLP for Resident Leader Program .weebly .com. All of the information about how to do it, all the information about the classes, all the information about the grants available are there. So now I'm going to ask Jamal to come up and talk a little bit about his PAC Neighborhood Association and what he, his vision is and the work that he's doing. So Jamal. So thank you everybody. I got to first and foremost thank my God and Father. Um, my pastor is absent this evening, Pastor Michael A. Gilbert. I'd like to also thank Ms. Andrea Burton, Ms. Lynn Smith, the mayor, and Mr. James Clurge, who was there when this was just a thought that became a concept, that became a plan, that materialized into so much more. PAC stands for People Affecting Community Change. And the Neighborhood Association has provided a platform for us to be able to go into all walks of life with everyone that lives within our community. So we deal on the premises of trying to be able uh, to provide relevant information and tangible resources. We identify them, we bring them together, and we join those within our community who actually needs to use them. Um, we've had some really, really great times. 
Uh, we've been able to engage with those who are homeless, those who are veterans, those who are young, those who are in the faith base, those who are old, those who are retired. Um, what we found is that community is a root of two words. It's common unity. So regardless what separated us, regardless where we're at, regardless what our age range may be, we all have something in common. And that is that we wanna be able to live in a community that is safe, that uh, provides uh, resources, information, that enables us to allow our children, our mothers, our sisters, our daughters to roam free. What we've been able to do to date is provide over 360 jobs for those who are living within Brockton, Mass. And we have a thousand jobs in total available now. So you at home, if you need a job, if you're interested in developing any form of comprehensive life skills, please give us a call, pack, cheap plug, 508-857-3232. But in any event, um, it's been a great, it's, been, it's, it's, it's a learning experience. We have great plans. We are uh, trying to partner with anyone, neighborhood associations, individuals, faith-based communities, law enforcement, who are interested in helping us really get if involved into our communities. So we're looking for mentors, life coaches, teachers. We're looking for apprentices. We're looking for opportunities and projects to be able to take some of these young adults that we're working with and get them into a, some type of skills base, some type of trades development opportunities. Um, so yeah, it's been a great opportunity. I'm not gonna take up all your time, but I do wanna leave you with this, is that uh, recently we've seen what would appear to be a spike in violence in a lot of the communities. And regardless of what neighborhood association you represent uh, or what part of town that you live in, if it's happening in Brockton, it's affecting someone that you love or that you know. So I just wanna make sure that everyone tonight knows that PAC, my staff that are absent tonight because they're working, um, we're available. However we can assist you, whatever your project is, whatever your endeavor is, whatever information or resources we have, we extend that to you 100%. Thank you for your time. You know, I'm sure a lot of us have heard that saying, be the change you wanna see in the world. And you know, that used to get me really nervous, like how am I gonna change the world? Well, you know what? You don't have to change the world. You just have to change your block. And then it's doable. So thank you all so much for coming. Thank you all for being engaged citizens. Thank you to Susan DeCastro, our city councilor. Thank you to Ann Beauregard, our city um, councilor. Thank you to Andrea Burton for putting up with me. Um, you know, I'm a morning person, so I send her texts at 5 o'clock in the morning. She's like a 3 o'clock in the morning person. So we're like two ships that pass in the night. But we're a good team, and we have the support of a great mayor. And so I thank you all for being part of the program. Now, I'm going to ask you one last thing. There's a lot of food over there. But I brought those um, wrappers, you know, that you can wrap stuff up and take it home. Um, with you, those tin foil um, sheets. So please, I have to make it through Halloween, and you know, the candy has my name on it already in the garage. So if you can take that food home and give it a good home, um, I would truly, truly appreciate it. So thank you all very much for coming. Do you have anything to wrap up? Yeah, if anyone has any announcements um, that they'd like to just say who they are, feel free. Uh, I'm part of a couple of neighborhood associations that Lynn has started, and I'm very proud to be a part of that. And uh, love Brockton, want to do anything I can to help make things better for all of our citizens. And also, I'm a part of the NAACP in Brockton. Right. And you also take the best pictures. See <laughs> <laughs> you know, this Yes. Oh, hi, I'm Grizel Quinones, and I'm from the Ashley Park Neighborhood Association. And I just want to thank everyone that has allowed us to um, be part of the neighborhood associations. And it has been a great challenge with uh, within the last two years. However, um, we've made over we've come over the hurdle, and we've um, 
acknowledge that there's a lot of things happening along with all the neighborhood associations and we just want to thank each and everyone and all those that are watching we have an upcoming event october 27th so please come and join us 11 a.m to 3 p.m all costumes welcome thank you Hi, I'm Ellie Wentworth. I uh, am the captain for the Midcourt Neighborhood Association. I've been that for probably eight years now. Um, we just had a meeting Friday night and we had a blast. Um, we, uh, we have several new neighbors, so it's great to a great way to find uh, to get to know them. Um, in fact, the latest neighbor just came about a month ago. I left a little uh, mum plant for the Welcome to Midcourt neighborhood. And uh, I saw them coming in, and I said hi and everything. And one of the daughters says, you swim down at the Y, don't you? And uh, I said, yeah. And she said, well, I, I swim there once in a while. <coughs> don't let me uh, make believe I'm doing it often. Um, but she was one of the uh, lifeguards at the time. Oh. So it's a small world, but she, they're a lovely family. And we truly are a multicultural uh, neighborhood. His wife has really, really filled it out. She's from, uh, oh my gosh, San, San, Tanzania. Oh. You know, we have, we have uh, just about everything, but the first one from Tanzania. <laughs> awesome. Hello everyone, my name is Kimberly Zuzwa and I oh, am the okay. present chair of the uh, City of Brockton's Commission on Women's Issues. In addition, I'm the president of the Sci Iota Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And it's really great to see many people out here really doing things in the community to bring common unity, I like that, I'm going to start using that, <laughs> both together, and if everyone has that mindset of common unity, just imagine what Brockton can mm -hmm. even be, right. more mm -hmm. up. Amen. Share your event Amen. at the War Memorial. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, on November 29th, uh, the Women's Commission, in partnership with the, for the City of Brockton's Women's Commission, in addition with partnership, partnering with the Plymouth Women's Commission and the State Women's Commission, will be convening on November 29th um, at 4.30 uh, to really hear and inviting citizens and all women to come out to really voice your concerns as to what can possibly be done in the Plymouth County and the state, but really here in Brockton, what is it that women need? What are we desiring? And so this is an opportunity uh, for us to be heard on that <coughs> bigger scale and that bigger level. So please, get the word out to your networks, to everyone to come out on that evening. We are hosting, um, with the city, the, the city commission is actually hosting uh, the other two commissions to do this. So we want to be very well represented. So when they come to our city, we, they, we want them to be like, wow, all these people are here. So please come Where out and support. And it's being War held Memorial. at the War Memorial. Okay. November 29th, War Memorial from 4.30 to 6.30. Thank you. I can't stand, but I'm Lisa M. Duquette, and I'm one of the Women's Commission. Yay, I'm Lisa. proud to be here. Um, I'm in the wrong place, actually, so I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to meet people that I've only heard about. And I think this is a great thing you're doing, and I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you. Hi everyone, John Drazenskis. I'm Vice President of the newly formed Village Neighborhood Association. <laughs> and um, I've been in the Village uh, all of my 65 years, okay? I'm still in the house that I grew up in. And um, the house, uh, after my parents passed, the house went to me and I'm still there, so I have very deep roots. And um, I, um, I got in touch with Joanne Zygmunt, a former political opponent of mine, okay? And we found out that uh, that our, uh, uh, we're kind of on the same page as far as um, where the neighborhood should go, and I'm proud that um, that we got we got this done. And I, Lynn, if possible, I'd like to give um, a a plug to a community event. I think a fun community event on November 3rd at the VFW Club. We are having a fundraiser, the VFW Club and the VFW Auxiliary is having a fundraiser. I'm a, a senior vice president of the auxiliary. Sometimes I feel like Mike Pence, but that's another story, <laughs> okay. But uh, we, we are having a ugly sweater 
uh, karaoke um, night, November 3rd, okay, at the VFW Club. Uh, tickets are only $10, and I think it would be a fun event for anyone that's interested in, at in attending. And 100% of the proceeds go to our veterans, which is a very worthy cause. Hi, hey, uh, I'm Vivian Senator, and I'm representing the Brockton Community Gardening Network, not the Garden Club, but the network. So what does that mean? We're trying to coordinate all the gardening efforts within the city. So whether it's gardens at the schools, gardens at um, the Boys and Girls Club, gardens at the Council on Aging, wherever. And uh, I'm just letting everybody know that our next meeting is November 1st. It'll be at the Downtown Center for oh, Community nice. Engagement. Uh, from 2.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon, and all are welcome. Uh, what I'd love to do is begin a, um, an Adopt the Garden program. So mm -hmm. if you are out there <laughs> attending a church or part of a church group or a civic group and you are looking to engage with the community and you want to grow food, you want to learn how to grow food, you want to learn how you can uh, become one with nature <laughs> here in Brockton, um, please come to the meeting, and uh, if you can't make it, um, be singleton at verizon.net. You can contact me there. Okay, thank you very much. Then, all right. Our new diversity garden. Yeah. So a couple of events coming up that um, Keith Park Neighborhood Association is involved in. You know, every year we do the Holiday History Lantern Walk in Campello. So the Lantern Walk in connection with the Gilmore School and First Evangelical Lutheran Church is December 5th at 6 o'clock. But before that, we have to put the little treetops in the barrels along Main Street because the kids make decorec decorations. And as they walk the neighborhood, they decorate the little trees. So if you would like to be part of the tree team, <laughs> Saturday morning, November 17th, at 9 o'clock in the morning, they're dropping off 30 little trees, and I need people to help me put the trees in the whiskey barrels. Mm -hmm. So go to kpnabrockton.weebly.com. You'll see all the details. And then on December 5th, we have the Lights Brigade, where people bring their own Christmas lights, their own strings of lights to Keith Park. We put all of the lights up in the park for one hour. The kids walk through and then we take them all down. So November 17th is the tree team. December 5th at five is the lights brigade. And then December 5th at six is the lantern walk. Thank you. Thank you.